Port Duncan, established by Captain uh, S. Burbank, 1st U.S. Infantry, March 27th, 1849, as a protection to Western communications, garrisoned by the federal troops until March 20th of 1861 and since 1868, now known as Camp Eagle Pass. All right, awesome. And this was uh, put up by the state of Texas in 1936. Ah, good morning, guys. So we're actually here at a local park today. Uh, you'll be able to see the, the family here in a second, but we're coming up to it's actually a fort. It's a Fort Duncan, if I do believe. So we're going to go around. We're going to look at some of the other buildings and such. But check it out. All right, so we're actually going to come up. They have lights up for the holidays. We're going to hear cars also passing by because we're like right in the middle of town. This comes up to one of the first buildings. You can kind of see. It has an old slate roof on it iron bars work projects administration 1939 to 1940 probably not going to be able to see inside but we're going to go around all right family sitting over here picnic table they have a park here like i said but then there's other buildings you can see off in the distance that we're going to go check out but yeah Kind of cool. All right, so over on this side is the Fort Duncan Headquarters Museum. Come look, they got a little wagon. Don't got a flag up. Let's see what they got. Hello. Hola. Ooh. Are you able to walk around the other buildings too? Well, this is closed. It's closed right now? Yes, sir. But uh, we really can't get to clean that. Oh, okay. Why you want to take some pictures or something? Uh, well, we actually have a YouTube channel, so we go around. Although, well, my wife's from here. Oh, I see. Yeah. We're just here for the holidays visiting family. All right, so uh, we actually got a really special offer. We got some uh, gentlemen. So right now, this location is closed uh, right now for the public, uh, but they're here cleaning up and just doing some work. And uh, so graciously allowed me to come in to, to see what's going on. And then we'll go around and we'll look at the rest of the buildings. Uh, all the outside stuff, they're not going to let me into everyone. So, but let's check it out. All right, so if gentlemen would like to say hi. Hello, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> and then this is the, the Fort Duncan Museum. Museum. Right. Right, and this is a lot of the uh, Aztecs. This, because uh, I, I was reading some of the signs outside. Uh huh. Of just, uh, it was like a stronghold, right? Well, it's been here over, how many years? Is it early 1800s? Yes, yeah. because Eagle Head became in 1849. Yeah. And then different rooms. Just some of the old furnitures. There's a lot of pictures. Yeah, because I'm actually a. Uh, both me and my wife were retired Navy. Oh. So being able to see some of the old like army stuff is actually really nice. Some hammers. I actually make those. <laughs> My wife's going to be so jealous. <laughs> oh, that's a pretty dress. Yeah, we actually have a friend um, that she actually wants to make clothing like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so right now she is uh, Navy and she's wanting to, whenever she's done, 
just garden and make clothing. You know, stuff like just the, the, the basics, you know, the real simple, the real simple stuff. Crazy. I thank you guys very much for allowing me to come in and look. Well, the old music. Really <laughs> <laughs> I, I promise you guys won't get fired. Oh. <laughs> Say no, nothing oh. but good things. Nothing no, but good things. Right, so here's the one of the whole ride ups. You guys can always pause to, to read that if you want. Plus, uh, here at the end of the video, if you stick by with us, uh, Gladys is going to talk about the whole history of this a little bit. And uh, But Mom even said is even she hasn't had a chance to be inside the museum. Uh, so we got a really good... So this is the uh, powder magazine. This is where they kept all their ordnance what I was in the Navy. Fire controlman. Got to play with ordnance and such. I don't know if you guys can see through that the glass. Can you see in there? I can't see. <laughs> I can't see. That's nice. The difference. So this is, looks like petrified Petrified trees. Actual stone now. Crazy. Yeah, the kiddo, she's still playing on some of the, the stuff. You want a house that big? It's a nice front porch. Yeah. So come up here and look. That is a really nice porch. And I do like the uh, the shingle shake. You know, that's all the wood sh shakes up on the roof. Duh, up on the roof. <laughs> and then obviously the windows are gonna be, you know, closed up like that. That way people can't go peeking inside. But yeah, so like they were saying, right now they're doing renovations and stuff because they're gonna have stuff like this you know that they're they're cleaning up they're they're getting it redone you guys can come look on the side I don't know exactly what this building was I don't see a sign but I'm pretty sure that it was some type of house or whatnot but you, you can see too that they've renovated stuff with electricity you know obviously they didn't have all that back in the day let's see if we can see a glimpse you can get a glimpse into the window nothing in there So while she was measuring that out, I actually, I walked around this whole thing, but I didn't come far enough. <laughs> Children's library. That's what that building is. She wanted to know how big this whole thing was. <laughs> so, so, that's why she's doing both. Long side, short side. So we got this other building here and you can see that it actually had like some architecture on the side. I don't know if there was a door that used to be there or a window that they've closed in. And then, but you can see it goes all the way up and it's vented on the top. What do you think that was used for? Share down in the comments what you think that this house was for or this outbuilding. 
I come around to the back. You can see underneath the soffit. I don't, let me see if I can get under here. That that was actually open. And then on this side here too, you can see that there used to be a door right there. That's closed in. Because it has a little arch on the top. But share down in the comments what you think this building was used for. We'll see if you're right. And then we're going to head across the street, try not to get ran over by any cars. So we're going to come up to the commissary. So that's where the, the family's at right now. So over here at the commissary. That's where the, the guys will come get their food, their stores. And then there's another building next to it. And we'll see what that is. But you can see over here, and it has this little outbuildings, probably a little storage area. And that actually has a tin on it, so you can tell that that was redone. It doesn't have the original the commissary. It doesn't have the original roof on it. But it had a little planter here in the front. Nice little door, windows, which you can tell is redone because it has screens. A lot of these have screens. They use these as storage buildings now. But this was the bakery. A pretty good size. Look, had a little metal frame on that window that no one would come steal some bread. <laughs> I don't know what that's for, pies. But you can see it's been converted to power. There's another little area back here in the back. So I'm pretty sure the baker probably lived in that building. So it's probably a, a house in the back part of it and the bakery in the front part of it. What you want to bet? So come around and look, and you can tell that that's all like really old stone. They're stacked. <laughs> Who knows how many layers of paint is on that? And that's probably newer. Some of that wood is. But look at a big old crack. <laughs> big old crack in the side of that. All right, this is coming on one of the last buildings here. This is the Sergeant Thomas Drury. We've got to be careful walking through the gra grass. We've already stepped on some briars. Get them in people's socks and I'm walking around in flip-flops. Didn't feel too hot. But there's like an old fountain. A water fountain. <laughs> no water in there now. It's got cactus, but it looks like they had this replumbed. Probably shoots up water whenever they have it going. I also want to watch out too for snakes and others. Oh, someone put a little drawing on the door. How oh, nice! <laughs> and this one's got bars on the window and we'll see in there I don't know how well you're gonna see it because it's all dark no light and there's other stuff over there and we give it got a good but look at that the beam that big old beam up there The door header but yeah this is like some of the stuff that you know i talked to the guy off camera you know these are some of the things they're going to be renovating you know just trying to preserve these buildings you see the the cracks just the settle settling you know danger keep out obviously 
because these buildings aren't, they're not safe, you know, for people to go into. But and that's why they got the bars on these, right? Because all the glass has been broken out of these, this one. So yeah, like I said, the glass has been broken out of that one. So they're, they're gonna put bars on it to keep people out of that building. But let's get back over here and uh, I'm gonna hand you over to Gladys. And she's just gonna talk just a little bit of the, the history of this place, Fort Duncan. Basically like what it was used for and uh, just a little bit of the history uh, other than what you guys have been able to read on the placards or you know just walking into that museum and such. But let's go see what she's got to say. A little bit of history lesson as we're slowly walking back just looking at stuff. Oh, well, it will be just history lesson of oh, Eagle Pass. Okay, so according to the texasescapes.com, uh, the name Eagle Pass was named after migrating eagles or one particular eagle that flew to and from its nest while the military was deciding what to name their first camp. So the town was predated by this camp, which was two miles downstream from what became Fort Dun Duncan. So Maverick County, Maverick County was named after Samuel Maverick. He was a signer of the Texas Declaration of Independence, legislator, and the man whose name became a synonym or synonymous with unbranded calves. 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 Ha <laughs> ha. So funny. Unbranded calves. Calves. Yep. Yeah. Got that. Got it. Yeah. So the timeline here for Eagle Pass is in 1845, Camp Eagle Pass is established during the Mexican War. And then in 1849, Fort Duncan is established as a permanent installation. So it was two miles upstream from the former camp, as what you see now. And then you have roaring noises of trucks, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're yeah. next to the main road. So 1850, trading post is opened by San Antonio Merchant and Piedras Negras is established, which is across the border, known as Piedras Negras, Coahuila, Mexico. Then you have, um, in 1856, Maverick County is formed, finally. And in 1863, the Renegades attack. So they attack Confederate Fort Duncan and townspeople drive back to Mexico from that attack. Now you have 1865, two years after that, General Shelby buries a Confederate flag in the Rio Grande as a symbolic burial of the Confederates. In 1868, the federal troops re reoccupy the fort after its use by the Confederate forces during the Civil War. A couple of years from there in 1871, Maverick County is organized as um, organized and Eagle Pass becomes the county seat. Four years after that, in 1875, the population here reached 1,500 outlaw John King Fisher, Fisher unofficially controls the Eagle Pass area. So in 1882, the Galveston, Harrisburg, and San Antonio Railway was built. And you'll see it here um, in a couple of shots. Then so this it. building was not part of that. Yeah. We are going to walk up to this other building over here that may or may not have been part of the fort. We don't know. But we're going to go look yeah. to see. And then currently, as of 1920, it said that the population here reached 5,765. And it's still counting. Um, with 94% uh, of Hispanics since 1980. So they have a couple of landmarks here. Uh, they have the Maverick County Courthouse, the County Jail. Yeah, we, we can post some pictures up of these as well. Yeah. Um, the Eagle Pass Depot, 
the Aztec Theater, the Public Library, uh, Crest Building, which is an older building here, uh, Harry's Cafe. They have um, a bunch of other pictures in their website, which we can also post so y'all can see some of their landmarks here. Um, also for some people that like little spooky stuff, there's an awesome house in um, on Cecile Street, Ceylon Street. And it's a big old house that was sold back in 2011. It's a two-story home that is said to have housed a couple of ghosts. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and probably put a link up to that too. Um, so this uh, building that we are walking up to, um, as you can tell, it is for sale. Uh, and you have the Texas emblem up in the top. And it was a barracks. So this is Fort Duncan's infantry barracks here. So it was built, like we said, it was built in the 1868. And then soon after that, the Army post-Civil War reoccupation of this Fort Duncan uh, building played a part in the aviation history. So it became one of the first military cross-country flights from Fort McIntosh in Laredo, landed here in 1911. And by 1932, the Army abandoned the post. Six years later, the city of Eagle Pass purchased it and leased the barracks to the local council of Boy Scouts. So in 1939, the building became the Fort Duncan Country Club and remained as such except during the World War II when it was also an officer's club for the Eagle Pass Army Air Force Advanced Flying School. So this was from 1836 mm -hmm. to 1986. <clears throat> and there's a lot of uh, charring on the wood. And different, so obviously there was a fire in this location, why, why there's not a roof here, but the stone, the stucco, a lot of stuff is going to be preserved. And then they came back in and, and placed stuff like this to keep that stone from falling down. You know, the different doorways, which there was a, a sign out that says enter at your own risk uh, into this location. So that's what I'm going to do. Enter at my own risk. And then it goes quite a long way. It's got some other stuff back here in the back. A little courtyard. Another wall. There's the showers. <laughs> So you can tell that's all newer tile, obviously. There's a vent hood. Or this could even have been the kitchen. Just from looking at it, because you can tell that there was fire suppression stuff there. That would have been a big vent hood for probably like fryers. And then this was all electrical stuff. And then, yeah. Come back here. That's a wood floor that I'm not going to walk on. But yeah. We'll come back over here and look at the courtyard. Nice outdoor bar area. And steps. Came over here to another little area. See, still see the window frames.
wood floor. I'm not going to walk on. As you can see, it's all collapsed. Yeah, it went all the way back. Crazy, huh? Crazy. Crazy. Yeah, that's a wood floor in there that yeah, you don't want to walk on. I'm just going to look at it. Yeah. <clears throat> Renovations got some poles back here. What else they got back here? Uh, so that was probably. Bathroom, maybe? Shower? Yeah, these are showers. Showers. They come in. Bunkhouse. So if you guys actually enjoyed this little tour of uh, Fort Duncan, you know, give us a thumbs up, share us out to your friends, and uh, yeah, subscribe if you're not subscribed already. And uh, yeah, definitely appreciate you guys for following along. Now it's time to go find a family, and we'll get out of here and uh, go spend some more quality family time. All right, so until the next time, we'll catch you on the next one. Bye-bye, y'all. <laughs> <laughs>